Hey everybody, welcome to another uh, video in our MIT App Inventor uh, Saturday um, uh, tutorial or our Saturday uh, camp uh, video series. So for this video or this, um, this lab, we're going to work on this uh, calculator game and you can notice I'm using a Mac, not using uh, Windows in this, to, in this uh, tutorial video because we're going to uh, uh, um, sort of have multiple screens in this program and sort of pass data between screens and on the um, Windows version for some reason this is not really um, working very well so I'm going to use the Mac version here I don't know why MITF Inventors uh, the Windows version of its emulator is kind of janky if you will but the Mac version is very nice so I guess I'll use this just to make this video easier to sort of uh, follow this is going to be this calculator of the game and yes not a boring uh, calculator, but an actual calculator game, which is actually available if you go to your um, to, um, App Store for iPhone or Google Play Store for um, Android. There actually is a game called Calculator the Game. So we're going to basically write this uh, game. So each game, will, will, this game will have multiple screens. Every screen will have this type of look to it. It's going to basically just um, have a goal, which you want to reach 64. We have four total moves in this case. We have these buttons. Every game will have a three by three grid. And some of these, some of these buttons are going to be not going to do anything actually. We only have these buttons over here. So I click on these buttons. It's going to add something to this. This is going to be actual a text box over here. But notice we're not able to actually update and put anything there. But these um, numbers, these um, calculations or these operations, sorry, will update um, whatever is over here. So we're going to just, I'll just go ahead and just sort of first, you know, do a plus two. You notice that now we have a two for our amount and moves is now going to be uh, three. Multiply it by four. We have eight. Moves is, is going to be two. Now this CLR button gives us the option to clear it, to restart this game. So I'm going to hit clear. We'll put it back to zero and moves back to four. So we're going to restart this. So let's go ahead and just beat this, uh, this game right there. So it's plus two, plus two, multiply it by four. And multiply by 4 will give me the value of 64, which will in fact equal the goal. And we can see here that we won. Once we win, these buttons will become disabled and we have this NXT appears. NXT will move on to the next uh, screen. And we're going to pass to the next screen how many wins and losses we've um, accumulated so far. So right now, we have one win and zero losses. So that's going to get passed actually to the next um, screen of this app. You won't be able to see it obviously behind the scenes so it's going to store how many wins and losses it's sort of um accumulated so far hit nxt next go to the next game and we can see here a new screen appears and this one has a different setup so this one four is our starting point we have three moves to try to hit the value five so of course i can you know apply some operations on this so you can see update will five by three and we see here we, we won't be able to win. So I'm going to hit clear to reset this. So back to, we're still in game two, but now we're going to reset back to four and moves back to three. So let's try this again. So this one's going to multiply uh, four, multiply by three, add three, and divide three will give us the value of five, which we will get the win. These will be grayed out. I'll hit next to go to the next uh, screen. And then over here we have 404. So in this situation, we start from uh, zero and I'm going to add by eight, multiply by 10 once, then twice, add eight again, divide it by two, gives me 404, which I get the win. These will be all grayed out. NXT appears to so go to the next one. So we've won, we've had one, three games so far and lost zero games. Right next to the next uh, screen. And over here, well, I'm going to go ahead and be starting from 10. So, of course, if I were to multiply by 2 and then hit clear, it would set the moves back to 3 and 10 is our starting point. So, for this game, we start from 10 in our calculator game in this one. So, I believe it's multiply by 3, subtract by 5, multiply by 2, gives us 50. These will be grayed out again. I hit next. So, so far, we won 4 games and lost 0. So, it's going to pass that information into every, every single screen. I'll hit next. And this last one, we have more buttons this time. And this is actually going to perform an operation which will remove that rightmost digit from our number. 
So we're going to have, uh, in this one, we're going to say, I believe, plus 5, multiply by 3, multiply by 5, remove that rightmost digit 5 to get 7, multiply by 3 will give us 21. We win, so these will now be grayed out, and NXT is now going to be available. Let's click on that. And in our final screen, we'll just go ahead and give us our wins. So we have five wins and zero losses. So every time we call, we play this game, every time we win the game and, and click on next, it's going to move to the next screen and it keeps track of um, how many wins and losses we've had. So our final screen, it just tells us basically um, our sort of wins. So outputs our, our wins and losses and it outputs the message based on how many wins and losses will be acquired. So I'll do some more operations on this, but I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, sort of pause and I'm going to um, restart this game with um, different sort of uh, different scenarios and see what we get at the very end Okay, so when I go ahead and hit play again, it'll go back to screen one and my wins and losses is going to get reset back to zero and zero That's what it should do. So I'll go over how to actually do that when you actually do a simple app that'll be kind of will give us an idea of how to implement this app. But I'm going to go ahead and just play this game again. So hit play again. It'll go back to the first uh, screen and we start over again. So right now what our program should do is behind the scenes is supposed to have these uh, wins and losses going to be set back to zero. So we're going to replay this entire uh, series. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe just, um, I guess I'll win four and lose one. So I guess I'll go ahead and just uh, to ensure so I'm gonna win the first four games. So I'm just going to just play plus two, plus two. I win, so it's one win right there. And then um, I'm going to take this one, multiply it by three, add by three, divided by three, we get that win. Then we're gonna say plus eight, multiply it by 10, multiply it by 10, divided by two. And this one, I guess I'll get this win as well. Same as last time. And this time I'll lose the, the fifth one. So this one, I'm going to go ahead and just say plus five, multiply by three, plus five, multiply by five. Then I'll do this, um, this uh, shift operate, which will remove that rightmost digit. And this is going to give us the value of 10, which will not be 21. So it's going to say you lost. So this one, we didn't win. So in this situation, as we play this game, we got four wins and one loss. And now it gives us this four wins, one losses, almost it gives us. So basically we have a set of if statements, which will, if you have five wins, zero losses, have some customized outputs. I had perfection. So four wins, one losses, it could give us maybe um, almost three wins, two losses could be good. Uh, two wins, three losses. So we can have um, sort of an if statement set up that will give us um, a, a unique message for each possible scenario. So how many wins we have. So you have five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Those are our six scenarios we have. And we want to maybe have a customized output for each one of them. So that's basically um, how this uh, game is gonna play out. So I'm going to now uh, show you just what's on each uh, screen and then we'll go over I'll make a simple app that's going to be similar, not really a calculator game, but something where we can just sort of get an idea of how we can pass um, uh, values to multiple screens. I think creating each screen is sort of, we've done enough um, apps in this class now that we can easily, or not, or not really easily, but we're able to create our own apps, but we're going to have to create multiple screens and learn how to pass between screens. So let's go ahead and go to the, um, the view or how our app will look. So basically this is going to be to look for every single screen in this uh, program. It's every screen, so I have several of them over here. So screen one will have just, we have this uh, horizontal arrangement up top, which has this label and this label, which is gonna give us our goal and our moves. Then we have TXT num. And I actually have it set up where I click on read only, which will allow this to not be editable. So you're not going to be able to click on this and add our own custom numbers there. There's a table arrangement where I have three rows and three columns. And I add these three, add three buttons per row. So I think I made the, um, the height is 20% and the width is 33% for each of these, which kind of fills up this uh, space. Now let's go to uh, screen two, same idea. 
I copied and pasted. And of course you have this tiny DB right there, which I will go over this in our tutorial, which goes over how this, uh, how we can pass between um, each screen. But they're all the same in screen six, so the only different one is gonna have this scenario. We have this output label, which outputs the screen our program. And then we have our button one, and then we have our tiny DB. So that's how this is going to look. So I will, um, so you can kind of just see that basically. And of course, um, we actually use our blocks to set these texts basically. So what I did, so let me go ahead and just uh, pause the video and make sure I don't show too much. But actually I was able to um, sort of set this up where I put a text in here for each button. So let me go ahead and pause the video and then just resume it. I don't have too much of the code revealed. So this block right here is how I actually set up the game. So we have btn1 2.txt equals plus two, btn2 2.txt equals star uh, x4, sorry, and btn1 3.txt is clr. That's how I'm actually able to set it. So this, um, this block right here is a block that's gonna run automatically when the screen first uh, loads. You can of course get this by going to the screen one and then you uh, click on when screen one initialize. So I'll show this also in our tutorial later later in this uh, tutorial video. And we can easily set the text of each button accordingly like that. So that's how I do mine. So that way it's, uh, I guess a little bit easier, at least, at least for me, I was able to easily reuse this in um, different uh, screens. So. Now we have this uh, tiny DB over there, which you may not know how that works, but we will go ahead and talk about that um, sort of uh, soon. But anyway, that is going to be for every screen we're going to do this, which will set the uh, text for each button. And then we have to basically add functionality for that button. So of course, uh, btn1, a one two dot text is going to do a plus two. So I would have to go ahead and add in this click event for that button. So it would be for button, I would have to click on, I guess I made a mistake, it's supposed to be for one, two, I believe. So I click on this one. And then on button one, two, it runs an operation. Uh, then I'll have one for button two, two. And then for button one, three, I'll create several um, events for each of them. So that's going to be um, our calculator game. Um, so, I guess you can go back to the video. You can sort of see each screen, what's going to have to be uh, shown. So you can easily can write this block for each individual screen. So you know which, which button will have what type of text and so forth. So let's go ahead and develop a simple app that's going to just help us mostly um, understand how to um, create a multiple screen game and how to pass data between uh, screens. So let's go ahead and get started on that. All right, so I'm going to now create a new uh, project. So click on projects, of course, start new project. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this maybe multiple uh, screens um, app. So a very simple program just to create multiple screens. Let's go ahead and start this. And there we are. So, okay, so for now I'm going to go ahead and just uh, basically just create a very simple screen here. Just have maybe a text box that's not editable and have a, um, have a button that will just add something to it. So a very primitive um, um, app, but just it's good enough to kind of at least test out um, this uh, functionality. So I'm going to, of course, select a text box, drop it over there. And of course you can rename this. I'm not going to rename mine because I don't, I want to move a little faster, but of course you always want to give your text boxes a valid name. Just so it's easier to refer to them in code. I'll make the font a little larger just to make it a little better. Maybe I'll make it 40, I suppose 40.0. Okay. And I'm going to set the, um, the, um, let's see the width to be fill parent and the height. I'll just make this, let's see. Let's try 10%, see what that does. Maybe I'll try a little bigger than 10% just to be safe. I'll try 20. Nah, 20 is too big. Maybe I'll try 15. Let's see how that works. I'll go with 15. I think that's good enough. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and click on this and I'm going to select the read only option. So it's not going to allow me to actually click on this and actually um, write to it. 
and I'm going to get rid of the hint because I'm not going to put a hint here for this one. I don't really need to. Then I'll put a button over here afterwards, drop it over there, and I'll make the width of this button uh, again to fill parent. And the height, um, sure, let's make it, let's, let's try 40%. Yeah, it doesn't look great, but you know what? That's not the point right now. So we'll just, we'll just go ahead and just try to see how we can make this work. And I'm going to, I guess the button text will be just, um, I'll make it blank for right now. I'll make the font of it to be maybe uh, 40 or I'll, I'll try 30 just to be safe, 30.0. So right now, that's all we have. Very primitive uh, game. And I'm going to now go to my user interface and let me see, I'm going to try to see if I can find this over here. Is it media? No, it's um, storage. So click on the storage um, section and I'm going to click on TinyDB, drag and drop it into your program. So again, just just like the uh, alert box from last week or yeah, from last, last uh, session we had. So TinyDB1 is not going to actually, um, it's not going to... Um, show anywhere. It's just going to be um, a, a, uh, a component as a non-visible component just like for the uh, last last time's um, alert box. So let's go ahead and write the blocks uh, for this um, for this app. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is I'll create a variable. So this variable is going to be maybe just, I'll have it as a total, I suppose, for right now. And uh, the value will be zero. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to um, go to screen one, um, initialize like this. And our button that we created, I'm going to give it um, a text. So button dot, let's see if I can find this. It's always um, fun trying to look through all of these and figure out which one you want to use. So I'm going to go on to, um, oh, darn. I want to go over here to set button one dot text. And I'll set it to, well, let's go ahead and just um, give it maybe um, have it display plus two. So I'll put plus two over, oops, plus two over here um, like that. And then I'm going to put into my uh, TXT box. So it is text box one, sorry. I'm gonna set the text to be, uh, let's see, there we go. And set it to whatever stored in my variable total, which is pretty simple. Just do a get block total. Add that over there. So let's go ahead and see if this emulator does uh, work correctly with this. So we have to restart this uh, connection. So we just try to restart it, refresh the companion screen. And there we are. So we can see that. It has zero and plus two is displayed for the button. So we can see that that's how it works. So when a, when a program loads, it's going to put these, it, it sets the uh, button text. Oh, sorry, yeah, the button text will be plus two, which is right there as a plus two. And text box one dot text is going to be whatever is stored in my total, which is zero. Perfect. So it does work just fine. So I'm going to now write the code for this uh, block, for this button, which is nothing complicated, very similar to what we've done before. Click on button one, button one dot click. I'm going to basically just do the following. I'm going to take my variable uh, set. I'm going to set total with whatever is in the uh, text boxes uh, text, which is right there. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to do a math operation. I'm going to add uh, two to this, so I'm going to uh, select this plus block variables get my total, add two to it, I'm going to set this to my total, so 
So I essentially just added um, two to my total like that. And then I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and copy this block, duplicate. I'm going to show the updated um, value to my text box. Let's go ahead and see if it works correctly. So hopefully the um, the app or the emulator automatically um, updated. And we can see that it's adding just like that. Perfect. So now I have to add one more button. So that's probably where I messed up. I want to have one more button to, I want it to move on to the next um, screen. So I'm going to just create a new button here. So let's see if this um, app is not going to crash if I try this. So I'm going to modify the, um, I guess the, the height here is 15. I think I should be able to put 40 at the very bottom and it shouldn't cause any problems. Let's go ahead and just um, do this and hopefully our the emulator is not going to crash while doing this. Fill parent. I guess the height, I'll make it also fill parent. It's going to take up the rest of the space we have left. So just to make it easy. And then the text, I'll make it again just blank. And a font, I'll make it also 30, just like the other one. 30.0. Go with my blocks. And I'm going to set button two. So I'm actually going to right click, just maybe just right click duplicate this for button two. Its text will be, I'll just say next. Like that. And in button to uh, dot click, I'm gonna have some event for this. Let's see if our emulator didn't crash. It looks like it didn't, but we have to restart it in order to have this next uh, display over there. So we just refresh it. And now it's all just like that. Okay, so now we're going to create another screen that will be similar to this, but uh, with just some different functionality. Let's go ahead and create a new screen. Okay, so to create multiple screens is actually pretty nice in MIT App Inventor. So I'm going to go ahead and create another screen that's very similar to this one, but of course I'll have different functionality, but the same exact um, view I'm going to have. So I'm going to go back to my designer. I'm going to click on screen one and on Windows, it would be control C on Mac. It should be command C to copy everything. So command C. Then I'm going to go to this uh, right here, add screen. I'm going to create a screen called screen two. And there's our screen two. I'm going to do command V or control V for windows. And look, it just basically just pasted all this onto the screen. So it's pretty cool. So for the, the uh, calculator game, actually, once you have one screen kind of working or have the whole form, the whole view set up nicely, you can easily just copy and paste to create multiple screens like that. If I go to the blocks for screen two, same idea, except it has some errors because you'll have these variables defined, but it does have the logic from the other screen preserved nicely, which is actually kind of cool. So let's go ahead and go back to screen one now, just to finish up screen one. So you want to have it do the following. So when I click on button two, I want to go to the next uh, screen. So to do this is pretty simple. Just have control and um, let's go ahead and find this. Open another uh, screen. So I'm going to click on this block. I don't know why I can't click it. Hold on, it's not working. Okay, that one worked, but why was another one clicking correctly? Let's take a look at this. There we go. I don't know why it wasn't working a second ago, but that's fine. I'm going to select screen two. And the button is clicked. It's going to open up a new screen. But before I even do that, I want to make sure that um, I want to store my total somewhere. Because what happens is this total variable only exists in screen one. It will not exist in screen two automatically. So I have to save it into the uh, memory of this phone. So in my new screen, I'll be able to retrieve whatever total I have left over here. So I'm going to use a uh, tiny DB. I'm going to use this uh, store value. So I'm going to go ahead and put this here as well. So I want to store whatever's in total. So get my variables, get total. And we have to give it a tag. So a way to reference this uh, variable. So I'm going to use a text 
uh, block and just call this, I suppose, total. It doesn't have to be the same name, but I'll use total. So this will allow me to retrieve total this in the next uh, screen. So this is going to basically store this value. Whatever stored in total is going to store it as the name total in my tiny DB. So we'll see how it's going to correlate in a second. So that's going to be our screen one. Let's go to screen two over here. So I'm going to create another variable. I'm going to create a variable. I'll call this total. Now this total in screen two is not going to be the same total like from screen one, but they're both called total, but they're in two different screens. So they are not going to have any sort of relation to each other at all. I'm going to click on screen two over here. And what I'm going to do right now is I want to retrieve. So this, I'm going to actually have this for maybe it'll be a multiply by two. So X two I'm going to use over here instead. Now I have to actually retrieve the value from, from the last uh, screen. So again, tiny DB for the win. We're going to select it. And we're going to use this get value. And we're going to use a tag. And from the last um, sort of uh, screen, we'll go back to screen one for a second. We stored some value in the tag name total. So I'm going to use uh, the same tag over here, total. And it's going to retrieve whatever value is stored in this tag total. Now we have this option here. Let's say if this value does not exist, then I'll just use uh, zero, I suppose, just so that way it won't, it won't break at least. I'm going to set this to my total variable. So this block right here is going to simply just retrieve whatever I saved into this total tag from the last screen. It's going to take, it's going to find that tag name total, get that value, and it's going to set it to my total here in this screen. And now I'm going to, uh, once again, I'm going to now have this be X2. So the math for button one, because the button one is now going to contain the, the string X2, I want it to actually multiply it to. So I'm going to have to actually rip this apart a little bit. And I'm going to get a math um, operation multiplication. Like that. And then I'm going to, again, once I hit this button uh, to dot click, I'm going to create a new screen. This third screen is going to be just a simply a label and a way to go back to the first uh, screen. So I'm going to now um, go to um, add screen over here. Let me see, I'm going to first actually use the file. I'm going to go, go ahead and first store my total into my tiny DB one. So I'm going to say, so I'm going to store this. So I'm going to store whatever the value is stored in my variable total. I'm going to store it into the tag um, total. So that way we can see that this value is going to be preserved to the next screen. Then our final screen I'm going to have, I'm just going to just add a screen called screen three. And this one's going to be a simpler screen. So we're going to have just a label in this one. So let's go ahead and select a label. Uh, let's see, where is it? There it is label, drop it there. And I'll make the font size to be, let's say 40.0. And I'm going to have the, um, the height will be maybe uh, 60%. Let's see how that looks. Um, maybe you can try 70%, um, I suppose. Okay, good enough. The width will be fill parent. I'll make the text uh, blank. I'll put a button over here. And this one, I'm going to go ahead and just need hard code the uh, text for this button. So, of course, I'm going to... Uh, set the width and height to both be fill parent to fill up the rest of that space we have over there. Uh, width, will, sorry, uh, height will be fill parent. Now I have this this uh, button. I'll just say um, go back step one. I'll go back to step one. And I'm going to go ahead and make the font a little larger. 
Let's try 20.0 and see how that comes out. Yeah, good enough. So what's gonna happen is I go to, I'm gonna go to screen two for a second. I'm going to write the blocks. So I'm gonna pass this data. I wanna first store total into my tinyDB and my total tag. And I'm going to go ahead and have this button go to a new uh, screen. So I'm going to have uh, open another screen. I don't know why it's not letting me click on that. I don't know what's going on, this is weird. Okay, let's try this again. Um, let's see. Oh, sorry, it's supposed to be a screen. I don't know, I don't know what's going on right now. Let's try this again. Give me the option to go to a new screen. I don't know why it's messing up right now. Um, Go ahead and just sort of pause this and come back. Okay, so I was able to finally successfully grab this block. I don't know why it's giving me problems right now, but anyway, I'm gonna have it go to screen three. So that's gonna be my screen two um, output, or my screen two um, code, sorry. So I'm gonna go to my screen three, and I'm gonna write the blocks for this one. This one's gonna be very simple. I'm going to, um, once again, just create a variable here, this will be, I guess, total, again, just using the same name, just, just because, like this. And then I'm going to have this screen three um, initialize. I'm gonna store the total that was um, so far computed. So remember our tinyDB is going to, oh, I should have added tiny, tinyDB in here. So let's go to, um, See, um, storage, I need, I need tiny DB. So I'm gonna drag and drop that there, my mistake. Let's go back over here. So a tiny DB one, it's going to do the get. So I'm going to retrieve whatever stored in value within our tiny DB. So I'm going to select text. And total is a tag that we've used so far. And then we're going to have it return zero if it can't find this tag, just to be safe. And we'll use our variable, our set, total. To that. And then for our label, I'm going to set the label text to whatever stored in my total variable. Um, let's see here. Um, there was set label one and set it to whatever stored in that variable total. Like that. And then I'm going to write the uh, button. So I'm gonna have a button click. And this button is going to basically go back to the first uh, screen. But I wanna clear out whatever's in total to start all over again. So I'm going to go to my TinyDB and then I'm gonna just say clear all, but I could also could clear a, sing, a single tag. I'm gonna use clear all, which will wipe out the entire TinyDB. But if you want to only wipe out just a single tag, you would click on this one and then clear tag, and then I would just use total right there. So it would clear that total tag, but I'll just use clear all just because I wanna clear everything after I'm done with this. And then try to see if this actually, let me click on this. I wanna go back, use this uh, control block, and I want to select open another screen and see if it works. And I don't know why it's not letting me click on this. Okay, so this is very bizarre. I wasn't having this problem actually earlier today, but right now for some reason, it just does not want to okay, let's click on this. Okay, there we go. And I'll go back to screen one. So there's our blocks and now let's go ahead and just uh, test it and make sure it does in fact correctly uh, work. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna pause it and then I'm gonna restart it. I'm gonna go ahead and start and play with this app and see if it does actually work. All right, so I have the app running. Let's test this out. So our first screen, I hit two a couple of times and we'll have six stored into uh, my variable total. So I hit next, it's supposed to load my screen too. And notice that oh, there's six. So what happened was we have screen two uh, initialized it stores, we have this total which has a value zero, but we're going to call tinyDB1 and get the value for whatever 
So this total tag stored in my TinyDB is going to retrieve that and put it to my label. So we can see that it does in fact preserve, it preserved that six. It took that six stored into TinyDB and screen two was able to retrieve that um, total value from screen one and I was able to store this into my second uh, screen. I, I can go ahead and multiply this a couple of times to get 48, hit next. And it goes to our third screen and again 48 is still preserved because tinydb we stored 48 into that total tag and in screen three we simply just retrieve whatever was stored in that total tag if we go back to step one it's going to basically go back to screen one and it's going to clear out my entire tinydb so total is now going to contain the value zero like that and if i go ahead and say if i say plus two again next So definitely it seems to be working. So for this program, so this tutorial I went over, I just went over how to have multiple screens, how to copy the, the complete look from one screen to the other by just simply selecting the screen on the editor and hitting Control C or Command C and then Control or Command V on a new screen. So it is shown in this video so you can go back to that part in the video that does that. But actually it's just creating the actual look. Um, um, basically, you can go back to the video and watch that. And in class, of course, I will draw on the board uh, each screen of how it should look so you can easily can just uh, work on it in class. And uh, that's pretty much it for this uh, video tutorial. So hopefully this uh, helped you um, understand how to have multiple screens in MIT App Inventor. So I guess thanks for watching and till next time. Take care.